Hey there coaches, I'm Rich Prado, owner of Play In School and host of Travel Ball Talk, where I talk to travel ball coaches from the best organizations about the current and future state of travel baseball. We are headed back to Atlanta to talk to Walker Searcy, the owner of the Home Plate Chili Dogs. We cover a lot of ground in this call, but one subject many of you might look forward to hearing about is how Walker actually purchased this established business about four years ago. His perspective may help some of you listeners that are going down a similar path. I hope you enjoy this episode of Travel Ball Talk. All right, welcome back to another episode of Travel Ball Talk. Heading back down to Atlanta this week with Walker Searcy, head man down at the Home Plate Chili Dogs. Walker, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Good. How you doing? doing Listen, right? I'm doing great. Before we get into even the very first question, I want to find out about your background and about uh, you know everything dealing with home plate. But chili dogs, where does that come from? Can you give me the quick background on where this, uh, the name and the logo and and all that comes from with the chili dogs? Yeah, yeah. The uh, previous owner, so I bought it almost four years ago. Home plate. Uh, Lloyd Thompson, uh, he uh, he was going through names right when he had first like uh, put home plate together and was trying to do teams, and uh, he was going through a couple of different names, and finally one night told me that he was just riding through the middle of Atlanta, and he had given his team like a handful, like, hey, here's a hat, put some names in the hat, I'll pull, I'll pull one out, see what, uh, see what kind of name we'll kind of go with. And he said he's going through the middle of Atlanta, pulls one out and it said chili dog and you know varsity's in the middle of Atlanta so varsity's got chili dogs and it was kind of like a match made in heaven there you go got it got it well that's kind of cool hey kind of let yeah man let the kids get involved a little bit and a little bit of luck and 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 there and there you go and it's a pretty cool logo uh for those of you who aren't familiar home plate uh chili dogs are down in the Atlanta area I think south Atlanta and and uh their logo is is literally it's like the MLB logo with the uh, red white and blue and instead of uh instead of a guy swinging a bat it's it's a dog uh catching a ball which is which is pretty cool so uh so all right that that was that was my biggest question so it's all downhill from here um (laughs) so you um you, you you already you made reference to that you uh to the fact that you you bought uh home plate chili dogs a few years ago yep can can you yeah. give us just uh take a few minutes and maybe kind of give us your bio maybe uh you know going yeah. back a few years before that and how you came yep. to be involved in that purchase yeah uh man just like anybody else doing this you know play college baseball I, I played football and baseball in high school end up playing baseball in college. Um, after that, you know, went through grad school. I uh, got to coach at Piedmont College as a graduate assistant. And uh, like every other athlete, not knowing what they're going to do afterwards, I uh, I went and went to Gordon State for about a year, helped out along there, and uh, was trying to figure out what I needed to do, what I wanted to do. And uh, by then, man, I, you know, that was like 2009, 10 and uh, going up, trying to get a full-time job, trying to get just a volunteer job at another school. Uh, I, I went in and just started doing a job. I went and got into banking because, you know, I had a uh, management undergrad with a uh, master's in uh, business. So I was like, well, let's just try the real world. Got into banking, met my wife, got married. And uh, how I got in back into baseball was more my wife's an occupational therapist and she was like the first person I'd ever seen like really love her job and uh I sat there and I was like man I gotta get I gotta do something that I love and uh baseball kept coming back and I, I was always doing lessons you know every baseball player is going to be yeah, doing lessons on the sure. side, just kind of doing whatever and man it was just one of those things I was like man I really think I could get back into it and uh well the draw man it was just a uh, I knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody and they needed somebody to run a facility in uh, Peachtree city and it wasn't home plate. It was another organization. And, uh, so I came up just to want to whim, man, just pack, pack the house, sold the house, came up, got back in the baseball wife's occupational therapist. So she can get a job anywhere, you know? And, uh, 
did that and then ended up at home plate. So I'd known Lloyd for a long time with like coaching baseball, coaching college ball and recruiting players and stuff. So, um, wait, so you weren't, wait, to- time plate. out. You weren't living in Atlanta at the time? No, man. I was living in South Georgia. I was down in Val Austin. Okay. And, and so you, t- there I was, was a- completely out of baseball. So completely you, baseball. and then, and then you, and then you rode up the road a couple hours and jumped, uh, and, and jumped in with this other facility prior to yep. hooking up with home play. Home play. Interesting. Yep, yep. And kind of just got my feet back, man. I was like, because I'd, all, I was always, I'd always had my the contacts with college coaches and stuff. So crazy thing is, is I had never been in like the travel ball world. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd always been in the college college game. So coming back into baseball with youth sports, it took me a little bit to kind of understand what's all going on and how it all plays out because I was more on the – I was the college guy. I mean, I was – my last job was helping out, like, college recruiter. So I didn't know all the ins and outs of the actual doing travel ball. So it took me a little bit to kind of get going and kind of see how, you know. All I knew was to get the kids better, train them, develop them, and ship them out. You know what I mean? And uh, so – but it was good. I mean, it got me got me back in, and that's, that's it was perfect leeway to uh, going into home plate because once I came to home plate, then man, it was I'd already gotten everything under me. I'd gotten my contacts back with the colleges and working with a lot of good kids, and had some good teams at home plate when I first started, and uh, just took off from there. And then I had the opportunity to buy home plate from uh, purchase home plate from Lloyd, and uh, it's gone really well, man. Well, it's been how, a really how, good transition. How many years were you working at home plate before the opportunity to purchase it came along? Probably a year and a half. Took mm-hmm. a year and a half. Pretty cool. That's yeah. that, that, that. That feels yeah. pretty quick. I don't know. Maybe he was ready uh, to to make a life transition, and you were the right guy at the right time. Um, yeah, but he, he he helps me every day, man. He's still uh, he's here. He helps me every day. He's still uh, still working there full time or part time. Yeah, yeah uh, full time. Still a big part of home plate. I mean, he's coaching. Uh, he's coaching one of our one of our top sixteen U teams. He's coaching the U team. He's uh, doing a lot of. He's helping me out in everything. Every aspect of the business, he helps me out in. There's, um, there's probably a guy uh, or two listening who is maybe thinking about, or maybe the opportunity is, you know, presented to him. Either it's already has, or maybe it will come in the future uh, to buy a place or sell a place. Uh, do, do you yep. have, do you have any, you know, any any words of wisdom or? Uh, any advice for that person uh, before they, you know, before they go down that road? Yeah. I mean, it, my, my thing is, is I'd always thought that I wanted to kind of like do my own thing, uh-huh. you know, like run my, start my own business, do everything. And uh, yeah, it, home plates, big organization been around for a long time. I Now you can always do your own thing. You know what sure. I mean? You can always put your own twist on it. But if it's something that's going really good, you know, it's always going to work, you know, yeah. they're always going to have their niche. And, uh, but you know, you can always put your little twist on it and how you want to do things. Cause everything, you know, it's always gets, it always changes. That's how baseball is. Baseball is always adapting. So I would just say, you know, go in with an open mind, take a lot of, uh, get a lot of help from previous owners and, you know, from other people, but also know that you can, you can, and you will succeed on doing your own little twist to making the place a little bit better. In your, you know, because it's, it's yours. You got to own it. You know what yeah, I mean? Got it. Um, um, now, like like a lot of the guys I talk to on uh, on Travel Ball Talk, the the Chili Dogs and Home Plate is set up as a the team side of things, but you also have a facility. Um, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think your your facility is on the newer side. Uh, maybe yep. maybe a couple years old or something. You want to? Can, can you describe um, kind of the layout? Maybe give some some square footage and how you set it up because it's yeah. it's. I've seen the photos. I was just looking at pictures of it. It's it's. Um, I would say it's it's pretty unique. I don't think I've seen one quite like it. It's a pretty cool layout. So yeah. try and try and talk about that for a second. Yeah. So when I purchased Home Plate, Lloyd had had uh, Home Plate was already we already had a facility. Um, when I, when I purchased it, you know, I still was in that, uh, that older facility. But then I uh, had the opportunity to move over into another uh, area. And with that, I knew with my – the concerns that I had 
where, man, I don't know if I'm ever going to – how much space, right? Everybody always thinks about space. So I knew we had nine cages in the old area. Now we have 18 cages. So I doubled it. All I want to do is just double it and be able to just uh, help more kids and just not have – because the worst thing in having a facility is when you have teams coming in to hit, you have lessons going on, and then little Johnny and his dad want to come in and hit. And yeah. then you have to ask Mr. Little Johnny, to say, hey, can I borrow that cage? Yeah. You know, like that's, that's terrible. I hate, I hated that. And uh, it was a bad feeling. But uh, now, so we got nine cages on one side, nine cages on another side. And the cool thing is we have this, I call it a cube. Um, it's, it's 45 foot wide. It's got four mounds. I just built one huge continuous mound with just four rubber uh, pitching mounds on there. With uh, it's forty five foot wide, a hundred foot long, with twenty three foot high, and it's all one net. So, uh, you know, we can go live on live. We can hit ground balls. We can do. We got an L screen in there. We can take BP. I mean, people ask me about hit tracks, and I'm like, well, that's a hundred feet right there. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're gonna know when you uh, when you roll over a ball or something like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get you know it. <laughs> But I mean, it's, it's good. And then we also got like a 10,000 square foot area that, uh, we have a full gym, uh, elite performance Institute, uh, works with us and, uh, they have the space and they train all of our guys and uh, it's working out, man. It's about 30, it's probably 32,000 square feet total. That's so, not count offices and stuff. So, but, so if you're listening and, and you didn't quite catch all that, he's got a, a, a center space that's for pitching. It's uh, a yeah. 45 wood wide by a hundred feet long. And yep. on, on the side where the mounds is, it's one continuous rubber or, or, or elevated mound basically with four rubbers. Yeah, elevated mound. And, yep. and it's basically a big turf area that you could do anything on. Um, wide yeah. open, wide um, open on both sides of that. There are nine, cages for a total of 18 cages it's a it's a it's a pretty spectacular uh design um i'm I'm sure there's others that are you know bigger and different but this particular layout um is 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 pretty unique now right before we hit record i was asking uh walker if those the the two sides where the cages are that are divided you know, it's basically two more huge turf areas that are divided into nine cages. I go, hey, can you open that up? And now all of a sudden you have, you know, three separate huge turf areas. Yeah. And he, uh, well, g- go ahead and want, why don't you tell him, you know, yeah. the, the answer yeah, to that and that. then the reasoning behind <laughs> the answer. Yeah. So, uh, trust me, I stayed up late at night wondering if I needed it because you only have one chance. When uh, that's when building a new facility, you have one shot because you don't want to redo it. So went in, and then I was thinking about it, and then like the very last second, right before I, you know, made the decision, I started. I just came outside, and I'm like, oh, I have a, I got a turf field sitting right outside. So we can run the sixty, we can take ground balls, we can do everything. Yeah, and uh, that's what I, that's one thing in the whole design of the facility is, you know, yes, I could have gone a little bit more in this area or done something, but I can just walk across the parking lot. And I got yeah. a turf field sitting out yeah. here. Because so C- the looking at the facility in a vacuum, you go, "Wow, it would have been nice to have the ability to have three open areas instead yep. of yep. the one open area." Uh, yep. However, you're not in a vacuum. You open your back door, and there's a a full size turf field. So you didn't yeah. you didn't even need to go and spend that extra money to put everything on on rails or <laughs> or lifts or right. or whatever however you wanted to do it um so so that's yeah. pretty amazing turf field right outside your backyard probably not a lot of indoor facilities that um that that can claim that was was that turf field there when you purchased the facility yeah it was that was something that lloyd and uh lloyd got taken care of before and it's just it's been a saving grace man it's awesome it drains five inches of water in 15 minutes. Oh. So, I mean, I mean, it can hurricane, go to your cars, wait 15 minutes, come back out, we're playing baseball. Yeah. So, I mean, it's – and honestly, man, it's a game changer. It's an absolute game changer because all of our youth teams, 
Like I think I, I think I uh, canceled one practice last season for my youth team. Wow. Yeah. So let's I mean, talk. Just let's last talk, night at practice. Yeah. 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 Let, let, let's talk about that because you you know you talked about before we hit record. You were talking about uh, we were having a conversation about the ability to have practice and. You know, for for those of you who've never been to Atlanta, you know it's a big city. It's one of the biggest cities in the in the country. It's it's all of six million people, and what that what that offers is the ability to to for many of these organizations to have enough local kids that that allows you the ability to practice. You know, and and yep. you know, I was telling Walker that's in in some circumstances having uh, constant practices is tough to do when you have kids from, you know, all over a state or all over a region, which is, which is almost normal these days. Um, so talk to us about just, you know, kind of how y'all lay out practice and, and as far as the, you know, the, uh, the quantity, uh, maybe in yeah. season, what, what your kids are getting for, uh, for playing with the chili dogs. Yeah. So, uh, it's twofold. We got the youth and we also have the high school. Uh, youth, youth ball that goes. Hell, my son's on a seven U team, so it's not. It's we're just practicing. That's really what we're doing. Just getting them out here, teach them how to catch and throw. We're practicing with them, but that the youth ball goes all the way to thirteen U, and uh, those guys are getting two practices a week on the field, but they're also getting two days a week, same days, uh, inside. You know, hitting in the cages and stuff. So, and the thing is, like just like last night, I had a little practice with the seven and eight. It rained the first 15 minutes, but mm. we still we still practice. Yeah, it didn't and, matter. Uh, at, I don't know if anybody realized what's happened in the last week in Atlanta, but anytime you have high school tryouts, it rains the entire time. Of course, so, <laughs> of course. So it's rained the whole. It's rained the entire week. So, but the good thing is we've been every day this week. We've been out to be able to get outside and practice. So it's been good. Have uh, and, uh, has that has that rain been good for business because of high schools having to come in and move move uh, trials indoors and renting yeah, renting out space? It, it, well, yeah, yeah. The thing is, the good thing in uh, our area is all the high schools in our area do have indoor facilities. Oh, okay. So but they, uh, they don't need but it's been good. But the, they don't they don't need me on that end. Not not so much. But the big thing is, is they don't. Then there's only so many things you can do inside of a tryout. Yeah, sure. you know how that is. So uh, they're chomping out the bit. I mean, I got a high school coming in Friday, and they've reserved the field for five hours <laughs> because oh, wow. they just need to get on. They just need to get on the field. Yeah. They need to see these. They got to one. They got to get tryout completed. You know, yeah. so they can close that book and then start preparing for the season. Yeah, you don't want to go two weeks in a tryout. You know, when um when we were trading tax before uh, um before we picked up the phone you had talked about having the facility be like a family from yeah. from the standpoint of your players uh and your coaches yeah. can you talk about that for a little bit yeah um uh you know everybody always asks you like how good the, how good's business how good's the facility doing you know how are the chili dogs and or how do you uh how do you measure up to everybody else yeah and the way I measure my measure home plate up to everybody else, or I didn't have to be to everybody else. It's just kind of like an inner piece, I guess, is, you know, how many guys come back in the off seasons and train? How many guys come in the off season during college or pro ball mm-hmm. and train with us? And, uh, and honestly, how many guys are coming back to work for me as well? So mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's a big thing for us. I mean, a lot of guys that are working for me now are guys that have played for me. Or played at home plate, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, we get a good. That's what I want, man. I want the family thing. I want it to be not so much a safe place, but I want these guys to know that these guys can come and just grind it out. You know, yeah. get better. We're all here as a together. We all have done it. I've done it before. Hell, all the other guys that worked with me have done it before. And, I get, uh, I get what you mean when you say it. a safe place, a place where a kid can come and feel comfortable and get his workout in. And, yeah, and, and, and do yeah. his and do his yeah. job. I, I get what yep. you mean. That that phrase yeah. that phrase safe space can get uh it can 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 go a different direction sometimes. But I get it. it's a, it's a place <laughs> yeah. it's a place of comfort. It's a place where I tell you what safe safe for the safe for the parents right. Safe. Parents know that they can drop them off. 
Yeah. They drop them off. Good to go, man. We had, and that's a good thing about us. Is the reason why I do feel like it's a family thing is, yeah, we have memberships, we have lessons, we have programs, but it's countless days, man. A dad and a son will be in there, and you know, our instructors. The reason why I love our instructors is because they just walk in, but hey, man, you want me to throw it to them? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Or here's a little tidbit, or something like that. And that's yeah. that's what I like. And we have plenty of parents like, hey, I'm dropping off little Timmy. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We're good. See We're back a couple there. Hours. No worries. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, man, my seven year old runs rampant in there. So <laughs> I would imagine <laughs> so. I, I would imagine. <laughs> Everybody knows that kid. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about some skill set stuff for a second, because because this is something. Yeah. I, I, I when I saw when I saw you text me this, I said, "Oh man, I was literally just talking about this catch and throw as a skill set." Mm. How, wh- yep. T- just just go, just talk about that for a second. All right. So probably one of the best things I ever did, I have done right now, is I we uh, one. I'm putting together, I'm putting together like everybody's got their own like manual of how they do things. Yeah. Right. So we're putting together, uh, I'm calling it the chili cheese dog. It's got everything. Okay. Chili cheese dog's got everything. I like it. So, okay. <laughs> so my, uh, my do all do all book is, uh, it's going to be a chili cheese dog. It's up to like 180 pages now. It's like, we just keep putting stuff in there. Yeah. But one of the biggest things was, by uh, I'd gotten in touch. I'd hired on Jake Ash. Jake played shortstop at Georgia tech, but he also pitched for the Miami Marlins. Okay. Right? In the big leagues. Mm. So one thing that we kept talking about was like, you know, the good players can all play catch. Yeah. You know? They can all play catch. And uh and then we we're just sitting there trying to do like a, you know, the developing series, you know, like, you know, what's youth ball, what's intermediate, what's high school level and everything. And then we just started all the way from the bottom and we started implementing it's not just getting loose. Like we're trying to get out of the verbiage of, hey, let's just get loose. Let's, you know, just throw or throwing progression or something. Like, no, it's catch and throw. So top to bottom from 7U all the way up to our high school guys, we we catch and throw for 15 minutes. Yeah, That's before practice. That's before a game. Um, I mean, that's, that's how we do it here. Other people may have other opinions, but we do it for 15 minutes. And what we notice, I mean, there's been countless games that – we do our dynamic stretch. We do our runs. We do our run, our, our you know, our picks. We do our uh, leads. We'll throw for 15 minutes, and there might be sometimes we're not even get into a chance to be able to hit them in and out. Mm-hmm. But if you catch and throw for 15 minutes, not only are you working on the throwing progression, you're also working on catching the ball too. Mm-hmm. And that's what's helped out with our younger guys. And you know how it is with with the catch, with the throwing progression, and going all the way out. You can work on cutoffs. You can work on inside moves with infielders, you know, you can work on a lot of different stuff on the whole sequence of throwing. Mm -hmm. So as a practice plan, I don't have to sequence that. I don't have to put that into a practice plan. You know, I don't have to sit there and get in a straight line like a snake and work on my cutoff throws when I've already taken care of that in my first 15 minutes of my throwing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why, man, it's, and the thing is, is we have, we have done a really good job. Jake Ash and Miles J had done a really good job on, I mean, they just walk around during our youth practices. And and it's awesome to see because our, our field's so big. Our field's 428 feet, uh, yeah, dead center. So we make four fields in our field. And it's something to see, man. We're standing in the middle and you got all the teams. And we'll have practices from 537 and then a whole new group will come in from 7 to 830. And everybody's doing the same stuff. And you've seen them throw the right way and catch the ball and stuff. It's the day and age, I mean, Hell, I remember when we first implemented it, we had a high school practice. And I just wanted to – we didn't even say it. We just wanted to, like, time them, see how long they threw. Mm-hmm. We may have made it to, like, six minutes. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like, it's, you don't realize how short you do you do it until you actually have to sit there and throw for 15 minutes. You know? And But that's a big thing. Man, it's just – it's changed the game for us. Defense has gotten better. Our arms are starting to get better. And – uh I like, I like just, it's a routine. That's the biggest thing. You, you know, in this day and age of, uh, you know, the Twitter gurus on the hitting and the pitching side, you know, it's like a, like a dime a dozen. Um, yeah. But I tell you some of my, some of, some of my favorite 
stuff um, comes from the infield guys. There's one 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 infield guy right in your backyard. Um, uh, Trent, uh, what's Trent's? What's, oh yeah. Trent, yep. Trent, Trent's Trent's been putting out some some comment. Yeah. What, how, how do you pronounce his last name? I I, I just know Coach Trent. He's, Coach uh, Mangero, correct? Like I, Mangero. Yeah, Mangero. He's been him and uh, Trotsky have been teaming up yep. for some camps, and I've never met Trotsky, but that guy uh, he he puts out arguably the the best infield stuff out there. Um, and the other the other guy yeah. the other guy I love is uh, Tucker Frawley from from Yale, mm-hmm. although. Did he leave Yale? I don't, I don't remember. Um, uh, regardless, th- those guys are putting out some stuff on on the on the infield side of uh, of the the uh, the game that y- you know you most people just aren't focused on. They're just hey, let's go go get go get a bat and you know, know. and and, uh, and la- launch angle this and exit velo that and you know at the yeah. end of the day if you can catch and throw and if you can catch and throw in the infield. Whew, now you're you're going to put a lot of pressure on people. Uh, you're going to win a lot of baseball games. Um, but man, that's it's uh, you know I had a I had a parent of a youth um, team eight U team called me up or emailed me the other day. And he was looking for advice and and literally the the reason your bullet point stood out to me is because what I told that guy was just catch and throw, just catch and throw. Yeah, just man. come up with have a bunch of drills that you can do when you have six kids show up to practice, because that's what happens at the 8U level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and catch and throw. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah you're going to hit. Yeah, you're going to do that. They're going to take yeah. BP. But six kids taking BP is not going to take you two hours. So have a lot of drills yeah. where you practice catching the ball and throwing the ball and doing it in, in a lot of different ways. Um, cool stuff. That's, hey, why so- been, yeah. that's, why been, that's why I've enjoyed – I'm kind of running all the practices for my son's team, my seven, his 7 8 team. And I started sitting there thinking about how I like running practices or how getting game speed going for my older guys. And every time we do that, we do like a BP inter squad, you know, like a lot of BP inter squad coaches throwing. And I'm like, guys, we're going to do so for seven and eight, every practice. We do our fundies, we do our little, you know, infield drills, outfield drills, catch and throw and stuff. And then, man, we'll just jump right into like a 30 minute BP inter squad, but which is technically a coach pitch game anyway. Yeah. So, uh, and that's man, like for those seven and eight, the more game like things they can get going, man, they're just going to figure it out themselves. I mean, that's honestly, I, there's some practices like I don't even say anything. Like I'm not going to tell you where to throw the ball. I'm not going to joystick coach. Mm-hmm. Like balls on the ground, where are you throwing, man? Where are you going? That's it. And they're <laughs> so. and and they're 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 getting opportunities to see plays. Which, oh yeah, which is yeah. way different than just taking BP and ground balls, right? Because oh yeah, because yep. I mean I'm I'm. I'm 40 now, and I swear every every time I go to the field, you see something you've never seen before, and the, oh, and the yeah, way always. you prepare for that is just by being out on the field and seeing plays. You see plays, you see yep. plays, you see plays, and if these kids can see plays, well, it might surprise them this time, but then next time it happens, they're ready for it. And that's the whole point. Yeah. Um, that's yep. that's why the, the the game situation is is the best teacher. It's the best teacher. Um, so speaking of little guys, and speaking of, I mentioned I mentioned launch angle a second ago, kind of tongue in cheek. Um, yeah. Let, let's talk about that phrase or those types of phrases that are awesome phrases. Um, yeah. But let's talk about how 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 do you apply that type of uh, language when you're dealing with your your kids team, your you know that seven and eight year old uh, team. Uh, honestly, it's it's I'll take it even more. It's like. I'll go from my seven and eight all the way up to my high school guys. Okay. Um, I try to keep that word out of my mouth mm-hmm. and everybody else's mouth. I, biggest thing for them is I try to get them to understand at a young age, like you got to be on time, right? Got to be on time. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what swing you have. You can have an ugly swing or a pretty swing. If you're not on time, you're not going to hit. So, try to work on a lot of timing drills. And uh, we all we try to talk about ground force, keep both feet kind of, you know, using the ground. And then other than that, it's I, words I use are like cut the ball in half, square it up. Mm-hmm. And the only kind of like uh, the only thing we really track are hard hit balls. Mm-hmm. I just want balls hit hard. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once they get older, once they start going in like, you know, 
going into pro ball and stuff like that, then you can start working on some different stuff. But the big thing is they got to learn how to hit first, yeah. you know, and they got to learn how to use their body. But at the same time, and this is how me and you were talking, I, I, I don't want to use – there's a lot of big words, man, that people are using and for some very young kids, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I want to keep the game fun, and I want to keep it to where – it's still got to be athletic, you know? Right? Like, I don't want to make them all robots either because you can't catch every kid the same way. Mm-hmm. So every kid's got to hit their own certain unique way. It's like it's like earlier when I was talking about owning a business. It's your thing, man, you know? You can't do it like the other person because it's a total different, total different business. So it's just like hitting. Hitting is, uh, I think, big thing is for me is I want hitters to understand what type of player they are, you know? And that's... Uh, that's what I want to see more. I want to see guys really starting to understand what type of hitter they are, what type of player they are. Yeah, a lot of stuff will help them out, but uh, they don't need to be sitting there. I'm I'm not the tallest guy, so I'm not going to be sitting there trying to hit like a six four guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do what's helped me. But a lot of stuff translates. A lot of stuff translates. But uh, I think at the young age, we just got to worry about some uh, fundamental stuff where. Yeah it'll translate into those types of swings for those guys. And they can learn that other part once they start getting a little bit, you know, more physical or a little bit older and stuff. So, Yeah, man, you, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's that, there's that sort of, uh, marriage going on between some of the new school stuff and some of the old school stuff. And you, you know, it's, I look at a lot, a lot of guys have love it, all the tech and data and have, uh, yeah, implemented it and you know i i I obviously deal mostly with the high school age and and up so i don't know what's going on at the youth level but you know but i've i've seen times where you see coaches they sound like they're given uh you know a a 400 level you know college (laughs) college uh a a lecture on 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 physics or chemistry or or rocket science or something and i'm like what what did any of and how is that nine year old gonna understand that stuff? <laughs> you know, it's it's too yeah, complicated man. for me to understand. So like I, I definitely appreciate the kind of the, the the hey, let's let's use let's use some language that a kid that a kid can understand. Yeah. And if you're talking about, you know, squaring a ball up, well like I I understand what that that means intuitively. Uh, and if the yeah. ball is coming down at a slight angle and you square it up, guess, guess what? The ball's going to leave at a, at a, at an angle that's up. So that's right. That's the same thing. Just said differently. Um, yeah, man, you, you know, so, um, some of this stuff, it feels like some of the, um, there's, we're getting into some, some heavy, heavy tech stuff. And I feel like sometimes those are the things that, um, you know, it's, it's like, it's like if you were to go try and make, uh, you know, Ford Pinto do what a Lamborghini can do. Right. Yeah. And your Ford, yeah. you know, your Pinto is that, is that nine year old kid. And you don't train that kid the same way you do, you know, an MLB guy who's that Lamborghini. Yeah. And right. s- there are pieces of technology. I've seen them that are, that are, you know they're designed for the Lamborghinis, man. They're 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 designed yeah. to get that Lamborghini to go another another tenth faster. Um, yeah. And so yeah, yeah. Will, will that stuff trickle down? Maybe, but but you got to get that Pinto uh, a little a little quicker before we can yeah. implement the uh, and and the Lamborghini type of uh, type of training for that kid. And the big thing is also, I mean, is that everybody? I know we develop. And I hope that's everybody else's goal. You know, I hope everybody else's goal is to develop players. Yeah. But don't. But my thing would be like, don't jump, don't jump five steps. Right. Into going into something really huge with these kids when they got to learn how to hit first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or they got to learn how to do the fundies. You yeah. know, like infielder. I mean, the infield play. I mean, what we preach here is like be efficient, be efficient, be efficient, be efficient, and. uh they got to learn how to do some stuff, but also at the same time as an infield play, you also want to keep them athletic. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want them all to be robots. I mean, the, some of the best infielders I've had have been the guys that can just come and get the ball in that and just field it that one hand and just set their feet and throw. 
you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, same thing with hitting, you know, like you don't, I don't want them to be, not every player needs to hit the same way. So they got to have their own little kind of like twist on it, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Good stuff, man. Um, you had sent me a couple other notes and this is, this could be a big one. Are we going to talk about this? Talk par- uh-huh. parents, parents. Oh, love parents. Love parents. parents. And you actually put a you put a really good kind of sub subtitle to it, and I'll I'll read what you sent me. You said you got to have trust both ways. Tell me about that. Yep. Yeah, uh, I, I I've been in a very fortunate spot with uh, home plate. Big thing with home plate, and I would say with anybody with the organization, you know, you got to you have to instill procedures. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it may be tough at first to put policies and procedures in rules or whatever yeah. but live and die by and stick to them yeah. because the faster the parents get in a routine the faster everything else is good you know because you can get the players in a routine but mm-hmm. parents are also going to get a routine coaches got to get in a routine but a uh, big thing that i preach here man is just communicate 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 yeah over communicate mm-hmm. i mean we try to over communicate there's i got parents that are like man i got another email good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> good. I'm glad you got the text. I'm glad you got the other email because, uh, and then the other thing is, is like what we said both ways in the comment was, you know, the parents have got to trust you too. And yeah. I've had, you know, there's always an instance where, you know, they kind of question or something, but also at the same time, you got to let that parent know that this isn't a hobby for you either. You know, mm-hmm. this is, this is my job. This is all these guys. This is what they do. This is, this is their profession. So, yeah. um, got to have trust. That's that's true. A parent a parent does have to realize, hey, we're you know, hey, mom and dad, you've you've hired these people to do their job, and just like you wouldn't want this baseball coach coming in and tr- attempting to do your job, don't come in and try and do his job. Um, yeah. you, you know, that's a, you know, when you were talking about uh, uh, a second ago about getting them in the routine. It made me think. I heard somebody say the other day, "You have to give, um, you you got you got to let them know, kind of, what the rules are. Because if if you don't set those rules, and if you don't tell them, if you don't take the ownership or or be in charge, then they will take the ownership and they'll be in charge. And that's yeah. and you yeah. don't and you don't want a hundred different parents thinking they're in charge. You need one no, one no. one person's in charge." Um, yeah. And, 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 and part of that comes with, you know, setting those expectations and getting them in the flow and in the routine mm-hmm. and getting them, getting them used to the communication. Um, yeah, good stuff. I will say, man, that's, that's like, that's like, that's like the number one killer to a team or to a, uh, to an organization is, and it's not the parents and it's not the players, it's not in, it's just the communication. Yeah, like the if you don't communicate enough, man, it's going to go sideways real quick. That's just yeah. it. Some of the some of the sort of the better organizations that I'm very familiar with, their parents are trained that yeah. they know. Hey, on Sunday night, I'm getting an email. Yep. On Tuesday yeah. night, we're yeah. doing a conference call. I know organizations that do conference calls. Believe it or not, yeah. Um, yeah. and so if you only email, you know, once every six weeks they'll never see that email. But if you're emailing yeah. regularly uh, on a weekly basis or whatever or more uh, with updates, internal updates, then then they're going to they're going to know. They're going to always know what's up. Uh, I can't Yeah, I, we use we use TeamSnap. Okay. I love it. I mean, I love yeah, I love TeamSnap. The me. reason why I love TeamSnap yeah. is because I can it's a one-stop shop. Yeah. I mean, it's the it's a one-stop shop, man. And it's scheduled roster. Yeah messages email text i can do anything and everything and it's by the click of my phone uh-huh. or by the computer cool. and uh and that's i mean that's i'm telling you that was probably the, it, it, an organization if you're starting up yeah. starting up or something like that do it where you can i'd spend a little bit extra money and to get it something where it's just a yeah universal one shot one place where you can communicate put one thing out there everybody's got it Boom! There you go. We've had we've had a lot of people that are uh, a lot of coaches or league apps uh, users. Yeah. Um, I yeah. can't remember if we've had somebody who's a, a team snap 
user, let me ask you, do they, does uh, registration for say camps or team fees uh, or even lessons um, flow through team snap or do you handle that stuff? Separately? No, okay. it's separate. Uh, okay. Team snap's just for our team. So, Te- so uh, team is literally our, your communication hub. Yeah, that's it. And the good thing is, is, and that's the reason why I try to stay, I try to tell people to communicate so much on there is because, yeah. well, with my, with my, uh, username, my login information, I can see everybody's schedules. You're seeing so, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I see everything. So, I mean, I want to see when the guys are playing. I want to see when they, they win a game and stuff like that. So, and that's how we get the, that's how sometimes I show up at one o'clock at a one o'clock game at some place that it's away from Atlanta. Just because that person, that coach has put their schedule on the team yeah. snap, and you know, it might have been my yeah. other team might have had a game close, and I'm like, hell, man, they're playing at one o'clock. Let's go check them out. You yeah, know? and and, so it's, and, and it's uh, and it's important for the guy who happens to run the organization to be able to communicate with everybody, the parent yeah, of a seven so. U or the parent of a seventeen U and everybody in between yeah. player and or coach. Um, right. I've seen organizations where, you know, you say, hey, can you get this out to your, you know, to your team? And they go, well, I'll get it to my coaches. My coaches are the only ones who have the contact info. And I'm like, wait, yeah. what? I'm, like, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, you don't have access to your own players? What is right. that? Yeah, you got to stay, you got to stay organized. And this communication stuff is a big deal. I mean, whether it's, whether it's to, alert them about next weekend schedule or when the weekend comes to alert them in real time that uh, there's a field change or a time change. You got to be able to do yeah. that. And it, if I'm, I, I don't know team staffs um, platform well enough, but my guess is you as the head guy have access to everybody. And then yeah. each coach has access to their own players. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, yep. that's, that's key. Key. Can you text through yeah, there as well? Yeah, you can text through there. You can shoot. Uh, you can shoot a work. You can do a. Te- it actually has a chat board as well. It's um, awesome. And then, uh, and then you do the messages like emails. I there like it too with my older guys. I mean, if I'm talking to a, I tell our coaches, then you, you have a you have a communication with a college coach, yeah. something like that. There you go. Shoot it. You know, and yeah. you can shoot the information out from that team stat to the college coaches for anything on the guys so we'll put the parameters in where they are high, our high school guys have got to put in they got to fill out all the information mm-hmm. height weight yeah. gpa sat act stuff like that so where somebody does come it's just right there boom it's on our phone we can send it straight to uh straight to the coach yeah yeah good so stuff man i'm glad i'm glad we kind of stumbled into this uh this this topic it's a, um it's honestly it's uh these these types of apps and and platforms are of huge interest to me uh, so it's, yeah. it's, I, I, I wish there was more people utilizing this type of uh, communication platform. I mean, let's be honest. Most guys probably have like a team group chat and that works, Yeah, you know, right yeah. on their, yeah, right on their phone. Yeah. It works. Yeah. But, but it, I, I can also envision some kid, a teenage boy uh, texting something that he meant to send his buddies <laughs> and all of a sudden you you get it and it's two o'clock in the morning and you don't really want to be on that group chat. Um, right, so right. it's like, uh, yeah, there's uh, just some pitfalls to being in a, in a group chat versus yeah. a, uh, a platform designed for the team to communicate. Um, yeah. That, yeah. That kid's not going to, uh, accidentally disseminate something inappropriate. Through, no. <laughs> through through the team communication platform, I, I I don't think he would. Um, no, hopefully not. So that's uh that's good stuff, man. Team, I'm gonna have to look into that yeah. a little bit more. Um, good stuff. Let me let's uh, let's change gears a little bit. We talked a little bit about a bunch of different stuff. Now let's let's talk travel ball. This this show is called Travel Ball Talk. Yeah. Let's let's talk about it a little bit. And you know the question I. You know that I usually ask everybody is is uh, to give me the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, you know what what are you seeing that you love out there, and and where might there be some opportunities for improvement, um, or you know maybe there's something that is uh, bugging you within within you know the world of travel baseball right now. So talk about you know both sides of the of the uh, equation. Ah, uh, man. 
a good question. <laughs> uh, I would say the good. I do like the the good that I like is I think the tournaments are. Um, I think they're getting a hold of the tournaments, you know, of when they are, what they're doing. Yeah, um, they're not going crazy, you know, because sometimes you can get crazy. You can get too many tournaments, and people think they have to play in everything, you know. Yeah, where oh, well. I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, big thing is, is I think it's going to take a lot of the coaches as well. I mean, at home plate, you know, we try to, you know, we're not going to play in every tournament yeah. that's listed, you know, but we're going to try to play our set schedule and get get enough games in, hit what we think we need to do and stuff like that. But as a overall, the travel ball, I mean, it's a lot of things that we've already talked about. The bad is, you know, over coaching, you know. Uh-huh. A little bit of overcoaching that I see a lot of guys do. But on the flip side is, man, what I do see is I see, I know at home plate, I see right now we have a lot of good things going with just the instructors that we have. Mm-hmm. And it's just giving back to the game too. You know what I mean? I see a lot of guys just in other organizations that are back in the travel ball. I mean, it may be because they're a kid, you know, mm-hmm. like I've never, I got a seven year old, so I'm probably stuck in it for a little bit too. Yeah, so, you, are. you know, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I just see it's kind of uh, I see a lot of other guys, older guys coming back and helping out. You know, and one thing that we try to do at home plate is I try to get those older guys, like uh, older players, to come out and help with some of the practices. Because all of those kids, man, all they do is they look up to those older guys. That's yeah. all they do. And uh, hell, my son wants autographs from every kid that was played on our seven. <laughs> That's awesome. You know. So, but uh, I think uh, the good thing is, is, and it's also having a working relationship with the high schools, you know? And, yes. I mean, that's, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to jump into a huge debate here, but I'm always going to tell a kid to play for his high school team, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong for playing for something, you know? 100%. And there's right, nothing, right? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with playing, a, playing when you have an opportunity to play. So, and plus, I wouldn't want to answer that question from a college guy or something like, "Hey, why didn't you not? Why didn't you play high school baseball?" That's yeah. a hard question to ask. Like, yeah. you got to be, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, uh, in us, man, like, we want to we want to help out our high schools. Like I said, we have a high school coming in to use our field. Man, they would they could use our field anytime they wanted to. Yeah. So, man, I want to help them out as much as possible. And uh, I don't know. I see a lot of good things going on, man. I think it's just you got to everybody's got to work together. You know, everybody's got to work together. And but even with the travel ball organizations, you know, I mean, we're all trying to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, all we're trying to do is get kids, make kids better baseball players. Like, uh, that's it. At the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like that, it. That, that question can, that question can go about 15 different ways. Yeah. That's why, that's why I ask it. That's why I ask yeah. it. You know, you, you usually gets the juices flowing a little bit. You know that you bring up the high schools and, and, and the thing, I mean, honestly, the best case scenario is that, you know, kind of go back to communication again, is that there's open communication from player to high school coach to travel coach exactly. and everybody's exactly. on the same page. And then that, what that's going to do is that's going to help the player the most. Um, yep. and, and you can avoid, you can avoid, you know, you, you know, what, whether it's an injury from overuse or whatever it is, you can avoid yeah. issues when everybody's on the same page. And, um, uh, and you know, and when neither side believes that they own a kid, because I've I've, yeah. I've seen that I've seen it from both sides. Actually, I tweet tweeted something out about that recently, and uh, you know, and and some people were like, "Hey, I, I see that more from travel ball coaches." I go, "Well, you know, I've seen it from high school coaches, and and it can be from both sides." And when when everybody recognizes that they don't own a kid, no. then hey, you know, you kid, you're free to do certain things. Uh, it's a kid's career, man. It's a player's career. So, absolutely. I mean, we're just trying to help them out. Absolutely. Really... It's good, man. Tell, it, any when when I when I ask about the good, bad, and the ugly, is anything else jumping to mind? No, it's all good. <laughs> I'm good. No, no it's uh, <laughs> very very <laughs> very cautious. I can tell. I can no, tell. I think. Uh, trust me. I That's think I'll right. find out a lot. I'll find out a lot. 
jumping all the way down and helping my seven year kid, my yeah. seven year old. Yeah. You know, and that's the big thing. I mean, uh, you know, he played in the tournament this fall. You know, he got to play in some tournaments. He played in like three tournaments this fall, and immediately I walked down the right field line and just, I said, I didn't coach it. I just sat down in the right field corner because, you know, if we're developing the players, I'm not going, getting on to a kid for overthrowing first base. You know, he's seven. I'm not going to sit there and try to take the same – I'm not looking for the same expectations from a seven-year-old that I'm looking for from an 18-year player that's, you know, playing down in Jupiter, Florida, you know. Mm-hmm. But what I am going to look for is a kid to, hey, if you get the ball hit to you at shortstop, yeah, you're going to set your feet and stick a throw, you know. I want you to miss low, yada, yeah. But at the same time, I'm not going to tell him to hold the ball just for the next ball to have a force play at second base, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm not going to just sit there and merry-go-round, hit the ball and run around the bag the whole time. Because right. I'm going to teach our kids. I want our guys to catch and throw, right? Yeah. So they keep running. We're going to just back pick and boom, there you go. That's what I want. That is yeah. my ultimate goal. I want small kids to be able to handle the ball, catch and throw, and be able to throw it around the bags. Kind That's of it. Playing it kind of like real baseball, huh? Real baseball, man. That is it. And it just solidified my thinking when I saw my <laughs> – it took me like to watch a 6 u baseball tournament. <laughs> I yeah. was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. My, it was fun, though. My, it was little, fun. my little guy's four, and I don't know when we're going to jump into the baseball thing. It's, uh, uh, it, could be nec- it could be next year. It could be 10 years from now. I haven't decided yet. I ha- I'm telling you, man, like I, I, I've, coached, I've coached college kids, 18U, all the way down. That is the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i can imagine it's tough for me to deal with one kid much at the, you know at the young age much much less a whole field full of them yeah man it's mm. fun though man it's awesome it's awesome do you have um do you have dads other not you but do you have other dads coach at your younger age groups yeah or is man, it, or is it all thing, so. or is it all non-dad staff no, what we do, we have a lot. The good thing is about being in Atlanta. We, I mean, there's we have a lot of dads that have. Had, oh, we got some dads that got more playing career than guys that work here. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, sure. And uh, they just got a family and a real job now. So uh, I say real job. Sorry. Yeah, but, well, uh, yeah, they're not playing in the big um, leagues anymore. They're in the they're <laughs> yeah. in the real world. I got it. Right, um, but uh, no, man. The good thing is, is we got those guys that they they buy in. I'd probably say half and half. You know, when they get yeah. to high school, all the guys are instructor coaches. Yeah. But uh, youth, I mean, how, I mean, many of our teams are just dad coaches. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, we, we get to run, we get to help run practices and stuff like that with them. But uh, they get, they're all on the same page. They all get the same thing. Then we do a coaches clinic. We do a couple of coaches clinics mm-hmm. before the season starts. Uh-huh. Get them a lot of material out, kind of tell them how, what my goals are and what my, my mission is for the kids, you know, big part of the mission is to develop, you know, and, uh, they're all in, man. They love it. This, and the, our coaches, our instructors right now are really good. I mean, really good. We're all, we're all very, I'd hate to lose them. I mean, I know you can't keep everybody at all times, yeah. but I'd hate to lose them because I, it's a really good thing going right now. Just the quality and the, inside the, faci- the inside the facility, you mean? Yeah, inside the facility. And the like, good thing is, is there are guys that are inside the facility also get to come outside too. And and coach team, sure. How yeah, um, good coach teams. are most of the guys who are instructors in the facility full time with you, or they work in a real job during the day and then get to do baseball as a side gig? Uh, it's probably half and half. Yeah, half and half. I, I so I you know I do have a couple of guys. I probably got four guys that were high school coaches and uh, completed being a high school coach, but got a couple more years until retirement and yeah. they're working, working for me. Um, I got a couple of guys like that, but also got a guy, a couple of guys that finished up playing college baseball or pro ball. And now they're working for me full time. So cool. I try to help them out man. Like, you know, if they want to, this wants to be a part-time job, they'll try to set it up to where it's a part-time job for them. Yeah. You know? But, uh, Trust me, man. I try to keep them happy. I try to do, try to keep them happy because they, they're the face of the organization. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're the one that it's. There, there's a bunch of them and only one of you. 
And so, yeah, man, and so they're yeah. they're gonna they're gonna have a day to day um yep. interaction with way more families than you might get the opportunity to um yep this has been fun man i'm, I'm gonna be um uh, I'm, I'm gonna be uh respectful of your time i'm looking at the clock now um is there any other you know parting words of wisdom or or advice uh, you know we probably have more coaches listen this to this show than anything so anything you want to tell a coach or an aspiring coach out there uh, inspiring coach. I mean, honestly, I would just be a student of the game. Yeah. Don't ever believe that you don't ever. That's, I heard this a long time ago and I've probably, everybody's probably heard about it, but like the time that you think you know everything about baseball is the time to get out of baseball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and it's kind of like a comment you said earlier. I mean, you could go to a, you could go to the civic center youth camp and probably figure out, find something out new about baseball. Yeah. I don't care if it's just to how to corral kids in the corner. Yeah, you know? hundred <laughs> percent. That's uh, I mean, you're just always on that edge, always trying to, always trying to learn. So, don't ever think you've learned so much, and or you know everything. I mean, everybody can learn something from everybody. And honestly, with travel ball, man, I, I wish the whole organization of travel ball would be more of like a family atmosphere as well. Yeah. I mean, I know you got different organizations; they're all working against each other. But at the end of the day, you got we got the same common goal, same yeah. common goal. Yeah. And, and I and I think I hope, maybe I wish, uh, I think I think most most are like that. I think I think most people in oh, this yeah. in this in this little space that we uh, that we live in that I think most people are good guys. I mean, honestly, yep. if 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 it wasn't, I mean, most of us would head off and go do something else. Um, I know. So I that know. so that so that 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 leaves me with a uh, you know good taste in my mouth. Um, no, I'm very, I'm very pleased where we're heading, man. It's really, it's really good. It's, it's good. It, there's, there's plenty of opportunity, man. Uh, you know, like we were talking earlier, it's like Atlanta is no little town there. There's a lot of baseball down there and there's a lot of organizations and there's a lot of good organizations. But then when you, you, you pop on the Google and you find out there's 6 million people in the Atlanta metro yeah. area, you go, yeah, there's, there's plenty of kids out there for, everybody and plenty of Mm -hmm. plenty of talented kids um so yeah so very cool man well i appreciate you uh spending an hour of your day with me today um we'll keep in touch man um uh man that was a lot of fun i I really appreciate it no thank you for having me thank you you got it let's talk soon hi buddy see ya I'm having so much fun bringing these shows to you each week. If you'd like to recommend a coach for the show, please don't hesitate to shoot me a note at rich at playinschool.com or DM me on Twitter at playinschool. Again, my name is Rich Prado. I'm the founder of Play in School. My goal is to continue to create products and services that add value to you, the travel ball coaches, your players, and their parents. Visit playinschool.com to see some of the ways we're doing that. Or better yet, let's set up a call. Until next time, thank you for listening to Travel Ball Talk.